right, so before I talk about my new dump truck, let me talk about the first dump truck I ever bought. So this was my first truck. I bought it in 2011, so about seven years ago. And this is a... This is a 1972 International 1310. I did excavation work probably longer than I should have without having a dump truck. I kind of started with a three-quarter ton pickup truck, and whenever I'd need to move materials, I would just load them on my flatbed equipment trailer and then shovel them off on the job site. So obviously that took a lot of time, and I would just avoid moving materials because of it. So then once I bought my piece of property, I needed a dump truck just to move stuff around the property. And I pretty much went on Craigslist and bought the closest, cheapest dump truck I could find. This was right in my own town, and I paid $1,300 for this truck. It ran and drove, but it didn't have any brakes. The guy drove it to my house, and then I got the brakes working. And I wasn't even planning on putting this truck on the road, but I just kind of really liked it. So I put it on the road, and I did end up getting a ton of use out of this truck. You know, it it was a very handy thing to have from going from not having a dump truck to having one. It was always pretty reliable, but was occasionally doing repairs to it. And the thing, I haven't used it in the last year. It still runs fine. I mean, it could use a little TLC, but nothing, nothing crazy. Um, you know, the kind of the reason I stopped using it was the... It just couldn't carry enough weight. So a truck like this is great for materials like firewood, garbage, scrap metal, mulch, most of the lighter materials. Once you start getting into stuff like stone, gravel, it just doesn't carry enough. You try to re-gravel someone's driveway, you get a load of stone in this thing, you dump it out, spread it, and it's, it's gone. It's like it didn't go anywhere. You know, this truck, I mean, it's kind of considered a one-ton truck. I would sometimes have over four tons in the thing, and it would take it, but it was overloaded like that. It was, you know, it was hard. You had to drive it accordingly when you had that much weight in it. I kind of realized at that point I needed a bigger dump truck when this one started getting frustrating. One of my friends the other day, he's like, oh, I'm going to convert my pickup truck into a dump truck. And I'm like, no, dude, that's a complete waste of time. You're, it's going to cost a lot of money to do that, and pickup trucks re really can't carry anything. I mean, what can you put a pickup truck? A ton at the most, and that, that's overloaded. So, you know, if you're thinking about getting a dump truck, at least get a, a real dump truck. You know, at least a one-ton truck like this is somewhat useful. I drove this one a couple years, but then I went on Craigslist and kind of bought, again, the cheapest dump truck I could find on there. I bought this 1987 Ford... F800 and this one's got the Ford straight six turbo diesel motor and it's got an Allison automatic transmission and I almost didn't buy it because it was an automatic but it's um, I've never had a single problem with that transmission and it's extremely easy to drive so this was a nice improvement over the international because this had power steering and it could carry you know this one could carry nine tons legally but on, on like the International, you could load this one till it'd be s spilling over the sides of the bed. And the, the thing drove the same way as if it was empty. None of the wiring in this thing worked when I got it. I paid 3800 bucks for this thing. Which, if you go on Craigslist, you know, trucks like this are on there. You know, that's probably on the lower end of price for them. Um, but with the amount of... I, I spent like a week fixing this thing after I got it. So, you know, that week of work... I, I probably could have bought a truck like this clean for in the $7,000 range. You know, you're paying about that much either way. Whether you get one cheap that needs work or you get one that's nice. Other than the wiring being messed up, this was a pretty good truck. It had good tires on it. The guy I bought it from was... I don't think he would... There were some things done to it repair-wise that were just terrible. Like, for example, the air filter was missing. And... Which, which sucks because he didn't even, like, know about that. I'm like dude, what about this air filter not being here? And he's like, oh, I don't know. And then someone took a piece of cardboard, stuck it in the air filter spot, and just poked a bunch of holes in it like that was an air filter or something. And I showed that to the guy. He's like, oh, I don't know. Maybe one of my employees did this. I'm like, what kind of operation are you running? I, I, I don't know, whatever. The, the, truck, the thing ran great, so you know, I bought it anyway, even though... The, it was a piece of junk and everything else in the guy's yard was a piece of junk but this has been a very good truck 
you know, I have to fix it occasionally, but for the amount of use I've gotten out of this, it's been great. A truck like this can carry a considerable amount more weight than a one ton. Plus the air brakes are a lot better. You know, with air brakes, you actually usually have a, a parking brake that actually works. So, you know, the, the manual brakes or the of hydraulic brakes, a lot of times like the parking brakes never work on them. And my friend had a truck similar to this. It was funny, like you'd start loading it and then the thing would roll away and you'd have to grab it with the excavator quick because as soon as you start put, putting weight in it, it would roll away. But but a, a six-wheeler truck like this is a great truck. Now, if this, this is an F800, if it had maybe been an F700, it would have hydraulic brakes and you could register it for under 18,000 pounds and then you'd have a truck where you wouldn't need a CDL, which is kind of nice. This truck, since it has air brakes and since the gross vehicle weight is over whatever, it's just over what it's supposed to be, you know, this truck requires a CDL. So I did a few jobs this year where I'd be hauling in like 20 loads and still this truck would seem too small. I feel like I could make money faster with a bigger truck because a bigger truck, like a 10-wheeler, could carry a little more than double the, what this can carry. And essentially, I could be charging the same amount of money for trucking in the same amount of material and just do it in less than half the time. So that, that was my incentive to get a bigger truck. my new truck this is a 1987 international paystar 5000 it has a cummings engine in it and a 8ll transmission so the reason i got this and i probably should have bought this truck or a truck this size a long time ago the reason i haven't is because my ford has been working great it's been reliable and it's pretty much done everything i've wanted to do the, the issue is I had a few jobs recently where I had to haul in material and I'd be hauling in like 20 or more loads with this truck and it would eat up a lot of time. So the plan is this truck, you know, 20 loads in the Ford is like maybe eight loads in this. And I could in theory be charging the same amount of money for that much material, but do it a lot quicker. The truck seems to be in pretty good condition. You know, there's no rust on it. Really, the thing drives pretty much like new. When you drive it down the road over bumps and stuff, nothing rattles on it or anything. It is, it's pretty nice feeling. So every time I post a picture of a truck or something, people always want to know what type of motor is in it. So let's take a look. So I don't always know. I usually figure that out. Once you gotta fix it or something. I like these fenders that you can stand on. All right, so this is the motor in this truck. It's a six cylinder Cummings diesel engine. And uh, all right, so here's the other side of the engine. I guess you can get a better view from here. Well, yeah, the thing, you know, it starts up super easy and uh, runs fine. So hopefully I'm not under this hood too often. I'll make this video about my first couple weeks of owning this truck and the first experiences with it.
I just had someone ask me to deliver 20 cubic yards of mulch. So let's see how big this body is. All right, 14 feet, five inches. And the sides are five feet tall. inches wide. All right, so the calculator says this body is 19.6 cubic yards. So this truck mounted up a little bit will be will fit 20 just fine. You'll get 20 yards of mulch.
All right, so one little repair I'm doing to my truck right now on the throttle today when I was driving it, it lost the Jake brake, and um, so that's the switch for it right there. And I noticed it still worked if you pulled up on the gas pedal, so I was like, all right, well, let me just pull up hard on the gas pedal. Maybe I'll fix it. So, no, that that pulled this off, and, um, and then I was driving the thing home with, with the throttle barely working and it getting stuck sometimes, so that kind of sucked. But All right, so I have it apart right now. So I have this on here so I can make sure I hold the throttle all the way in the back position. So all the way there is no throttle and that's full throttle. Alright, so I'm going to hold it there and now i got to put this thing back on and stretch that spring ever so slightly. Okay, so that's all the way off the throttle. Alright, step on the gas pedal a little bit. Alright, yeah, right there. Alright, now hold it right there. Don't move it. So now I'm going to slide that on all the way. And then this bolt goes on. All right, let off. I'm gonna step on it. How much? All the way, slow. All right, stop. How far is that down? Pretty far, right? All right, let off. All right, that's working. Okay, so now, now it's all tight and everything's working, but now this, this should be contacting this switch right now. So, I'm just going to try bending it a little bit. Step on the gas a little bit. Alright, hold it there. Alright, let off. Step on it. Alright, let off. That should be all fixed. Alright, so I want to set this truck up so I can tailgate gravel out of it. And it's already got all the hardware, I just got to add the chains. So. Alright, so this, this chain looks to be about the right size. I don't think that will break. Alright, so I can come through here. Well, I'm just going to cut this right in half. So. It's all the way big. All right, yeah, that's that's fine. You normally, so you'd probably set it about. Yeah, so probably about there if you're tailgating like a three-quarter inch stone. 
Now when you're not using it, look at that. All right, let's do the other side. All right, great, that's all ready to tailgate stone. All right, so this is my first attempt at tailgating stone with this truck. So I'm actually going under power lines here, but they're really high, but this uh, dump body goes really high too. So I guess, I don't think I need to put it up all the way. So I don't know, I guess let's, we'll, let's see what happens. Well, that, that turned out pretty good. I'm happy with that. I should be able to make more money because that's carrying double what my other truck could carry so I'm gonna charge double that just came up on this truck it wouldn't start the other day it wouldn't turn over the batteries were dead and the batteries are good but the alternator is bad it wasn't charging them and it must have just went bad because I know it was good recently when I bought this truck so let's jump into it and try to get that alternator fixed let's go through the diagnosing process on how to repair that so there's the alternator there there's only one wire going to this alternator so that means it's like a one wire alternator so there's no external voltage regulator somewhere to look at so all I gotta do is just make sure this fat wire here actually has continuity with the batteries and if it does then I know there's a problem the problem is with this the alternator here and I'll have to pull that out and probably in this case get it rebuilt it would be a lot easier than replacing it if this has power then we know the alternator is bad all right, it's got power, so we know we have a bad alternator, so let's remove it. So you ever play that game, Operation? It's a game where you can't touch the sides, taking bones or whatever out of a, a, something. Um, that's what I'm doing right now. If I t touch this wrench to anything, I got a big sh spark, because this wrench is live. Alright, so this wire here, it's a good idea to wrap that with tape or something.
Yeah. Alright, you used to grab that pipe. Yeah. Or put that pipe on this wrench. It's not doing it. Pull harder. I'm pulling hard, Andrew. Pull harder. Yeah, you're on it. That's it. Pull, That's lift the pipe up more to give yourself more power. Push. All right, it's on. Is it on? Yeah, it's on. It's on nice. Yeah, it's turning. Was it that tight still? You need a pipe? Yeah, you're turning it. Is it that tight? Yes. Have it yeah, it's turning. Go. Look, you got it. You got it. Awesome. What are you trying to get that bolt out? Yeah. Was it hitting the pipe? Yeah. All right, I got it. I just picked this up from the alternator rebuild place. The guy that fixed it, that's what he does. He does alternator starters and electric motors, and he does that all day, every day, so he's pretty good at it. He said this looked like it had never been opened before. It was all the original parts, and it was pretty dirty inside, and he changed the bearings and just everything in it that needed to be changed. And he said this is... You know, he said that an alternator like this can last a quarter million miles. And he put a new uh, pulley on it here. He showed me the old one. There was like the slots where the belts went were like grooved and it's like squared out. So he put this one on here. All right, let's get this installed back in the truck.
All right, in an attempt to line this up, I just ground the head of this bolt. So if I can get this all the way in, then the real bolt should go in. All right, so now I know it's lined up. You don't think you should maybe try to come from the front? I remember I couldn't do that either. Remember I had to cut it to get it out? Yeah. Yeah, go. It went. Oh, finally. Look, the ratchet, it, it pulled that pipe out of the way. All right, that looks good. All right, that should be all fixed. Let's try it out. All right, let's start it up and see if it's charging. So it has a gauge in it right here to tell me so I don't need to use a multimeter. be charging right about there. It looks like it's going up. That's good. That's good. That's definitely fixed. All right, back to work. I've had this truck for a couple weeks now and done at least a dozen or so deliveries in it. Let's take it out now and go on like an average gravel delivery.
All right, so I'm gonna start it up, let the air build up, and then it's ready to roll. All right, so I just got the air pressure up. So this is the dash. So that's cool, it's got this thing for the air trailer brakes. I've never had a truck with that before. Let's go over all the controls quick. So this here, this is for the exhaust brake. So that turns it on and it stalls the engine right out if you're not driving. Um, this is cool. You can select it from six to two to four cylinders and that works really well. If you're going down a hill or something, you can just be in and have it on six and then if, you're, if it's slowing you down too much, just switch it to four or two, whatever. And uh, I just kind of go back and forth between them to regulate the speed. And I can go down a big hill without ever touching the brakes. Which is not, you know, really, I don't think you could drive this truck without that exhaust brake. That's pretty important. You know, that four doesn't have it. But it, um, it really doesn't seem to need it. This power divider here, that locks the rear axles together to give the truck more traction if you're in mud or something. This is the truck parking brake here. This is for the trailer brakes. Radio and stuff here. Wipers. It's got air wipers in it. And they're controlled individually. But they work fine. So the truck has a regular horn here, but then it also has this air horn. I added a dash camera to it. I think that's a good, really a good thing to have in any vehicle. They're, you know, and they're pretty cheap. I'll put a link in the description for this camera, but there's plenty of them for sale. All right, and this shifting, I'm, I'm a lot better at it than I was. Than I was. There's still a pretty big learning curve with this thing. And the guy I bought this truck from gave me some real good advice. He said not to load the thing up heavy you know until you get good at shifting this because you could be going down a hill with this thing and not be able to get it in gear and that could be potentially dangerous so um you know that was excellent advice from the previous owner you know the first bunch of loads i hauled one i was only loading the truck light with brush and logs and stuff which is a lot lighter than what stone would be and all the roads i was taking there was no you know long downhills or anything so um definitely good advice if you're getting a truck like this because shifting this thing is kind of crazy so what it's a fuller this is the transmission head. that's the shift pattern there so pretty much you start out in like low so this thing here this is for the high low so right now it's down it's in long gear when you pull it up now it's in high so that's how you'd start out you got to put it in low and if you're empty you can kind of really start out in, in a higher gear, you know, like third or something. And then sometimes I'll just, what seems to work well, I don't need to go through all these gears if I'm empty in low. I'll just switch it to high and then go through the gear. So I'll either start out in first or I'll start out in, well, either start out in fifth or start out in low and then go through the gears, almost like a five-speed transmission. You really need that low when you're starting out, especially if you're loaded, then you need it. It's shifting this thing isn't easy because what you have to line up the speed of the engine with like the speed of the transmission or it won't go into gear and you don't use the clutch when you shift. So let's take it out for a drive. I'll show you what I mean. But I, I mean, I'm better at it now. I'm still, I still feel like I'm going to get better with more time, but at least I can drive to get the truck around and do it relatively decently. All right, let's go out for a drive. Started. You know, this is when you use the clutch, put the brake off, and just to turn around in my yard, I'll just use like, you know, in low range. It's, it's geared so low. It's nice having all these low gears. Go 
we'll go to high. And you kind of line up the engine speed with the transmission speed. Now I'm in high. And I can go through all the gears. You know, no clutch. You just got to know how to time the shifting. See, if you don't get it right, it grinds. See, like, watch. I'll do, I'm doing this on purpose. See how it's grinding? So what I got to do, I got to step on the... I can't get in gear. I'm in neutral right now. Can't get in gear. Step on the gas. And I got... Then Once you line them up, it goes right in. So there's a really big art to, have, to doing that properly. You know, it's, it's not easy. I mean, I'm sure once I get good at it, it will be easy, but... You know, I've only driven, I haven't driven the truck that much yet, so. So right now, you know, I'm, I'm getting it around just fine, but. And once you get into these higher gears, you're not shifting that often. You know, when you're just cruising down a road regularly.
There's a nice old track loader right there. I think that's like a Cat 977. I like the roof on it too.
talk about it, is the transmission in this truck and what other options it could have potentially had. Now, my Ford has an automatic in it and it is tremendously easier to drive than this thing. Now, could, do trucks this size have automatics? That would be cool. The, the other thing, how come you never see things this small that are diesel electric? For example, like a freight train is a diesel electric where it's got a diesel engine just like this has and then that diesel engine instead of being hooked up to a mechanical transmission which drives the wheels is hooked to a generator and then that generator is hooked to an electric motor on the drive wheels and then therefore the diesel engine can just kind of run at its optimum rpm where it's making the most power and it's the happiest and the electric wheels the electric drive motor can take care of all the, the speed changes for the drive wheels and it, with the electric motors they can operate in a wide enough range of speeds with enough torque where they don't need to shift gears which is really nice you can just go from stop to full speed in either direction without ever you know uncoupling the engine from the drive so I'm just curious why that wouldn't work in this application you often see it on other things too, like big wheel loaders, or I've seen it on military tanks. I don't know, it just seems like it'd be much easier to operate. I know there'd be some power loss, but I don't know, maybe if any people in the engineers or whatever want to talk about that in the comments, I'm just curious. I know I mentioned that in another video too for electric pickup trucks. I guess if it worked well, you'd see them, so. So now we're about to go down a hill. I'll show you what you mean. Like, so I got a downshift, you know, way before the hill. So, neutral, wrap up the motor. And there's my lower gear. But that's harder to do on a hill because you'll be speeding up and you're, you're, you don't have the timing just right and it'd be harder to get in gear sometimes. I mean, that was a nice shift there. I mean, when you get it, you, you know, everyone says once you get it, you get it. And it just takes seat time, that's all. All right, now we're at our delivery. That was a nice short one. And no mountains or anything involved. But I have been, do that one job I've been on lately, it's been up a mountain. And I gotta say, this thing can climb up hills, no problem. And what I mean by no problem, it doesn't overheat. The temperature gauge the gauge doesn't even move. My other truck overheats. It's a pain. It's a lot. It's nice when the truck's not overheating.
I could keep filming deliveries and stuff on this thing, but you know, I think this video is long enough now. It's really about the first experiences with this new truck. But um, I'll be sure to, you'll see this truck in plenty of my future videos.